Hey there folks, welcome back to another part of my thing. My thing where I am making a data, a Tetris data extractor. It's been a long time since I made a video because I was doing renovations. And then I tried to do a video a couple of weeks ago, but it didn't go anywhere. And I was trying to do something that was not worth doing. So I didn't publish the video and I'm overwriting the video and everything is gonna be okay. Uh, okay, so what I want to do today is I want to revisit what well, we're reading Tetris screens, which is a good thing. And now I want to clean up the code. I want to make it so that it will um, actually be runnable from the command line. And then we'll move everything back over to Linux and try it out and we'll see what happens. But this will be a lot of... Uh, software dev heavy stuff as I refactor my code and set up the startup projects and all that jazz. So we won't actually be dealing with Tetris screens very much today. Oops. Okay. So let us do this. I really can't remember where we left off. It's, it's, I think we're just going to take the Tetris data extractor and assume it's working and then yeah. Okay, let's collapse everything here. So I've got the data extractor. I wonder if I can make that bigger for the camera. Is there a I don't know. Oh, well, uh, I'll have to figure that out later. Actually, no, this is frustrating. Because <clears throat> we're going to be doing a lot of stuff with the solution folders and everything. I want that part to actually be bigger. Oh, come on, don't install updates. Bear with me one second. I would not normally do this. Increase font in the Solution Explorer. Environment, modify the font and size. See, I was there, I was doing that. Okay. Options. Environment. See, it says automatic. If I choose a... Is that the same font? See, that's not the same font. How do I know what the original font is? What is the default font? Or the automatic font? I want to keep the font. I just want to increase it. So what's the automatic font? Oh. 
That is a terrible user experience. If I want to change the size, I have to change the font. But the font right now is labeled automatic. So what am I supposed to do with that? What is that font? That maybe looks okay. Okay, well, we'll leave it like that. I'm going to up this to 14, though. Okay, now everything looks crowded. <clears throat> okay, uh, so we have our Tetris data extractor. And we have a program, but we're not dealing with it right now. Tetris Data Extractor. Actually, that is a net standard project, so that's okay. Let's make sure this is... Uh, let's just make it a library. There won't be anything executable from it. Which means we don't need a program class. We'll make a program class to run the Tetris data extractor later. Uh, digit recognition. Did this ever get used? This was my old original idea about counting the number of black pixels. And then I had, I had all my digits here, but I have them here as well under my canonical images. Okay, so I'm going to, actually what we're going to do is we're just going to delete this, delete everything. And <laughs> not everything. I had some thoughts yesterday about what I eventually want to do with this data extractor that I'm use, making. And uh, it's going to require multiple projects if it works. So the Tetris data extractor can be a class library, meaning that we can create a Tetris data extractor, but in order to run it and execute it, we have to have a runnable project. Uh, independent of that. So let's make sure to get rid of uh, Windows is so frustrating. Um, in here, in here. Huh. Sit in here. What? Come on. Where is my... Oh, this is frustrating. Where's my project? Users D theorem get. Okay. But see, I can't even... Uh... <laughs> of course it's in there. Okay, I'm trying to take away digit recognition there. Okay, so that's saved. Uh, we have our Tetris data model and our screen information model. So the screen information model is a series of numbers which describe where to look on a specific screen for specific information. Um, that might have to change, but let's just leave it for now. I really want to make sure that everything working or there's no extraneous code anywhere yeah 
image manipulators. We can check it if it's black. We can reduce it and we can scale it. That's nice. Our canonical images. Okay, so our data extractor is pretty serious. All right, so what we're going to do Point is X and Y. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is pull out the data, uh, the screen manipulator, blah, blah, blah. the screen recognition model. Actually, no, that's fine. Okay. That's fine right now. Okay, let's make our new project, our runnable project. We'll get this all set up. We also have to set up the dependency injection. So that'll be an interesting, interesting thing. Okay, so this will be Tetris What's my program called? It's no longer a Tetris data extractor. A Tetris data extractor is just one thing that it does. Um, We'll just be called Tetris Tools, for lack of a better name. All right, here we go. So what I want is I want to add a settings file where we are actually going Uh, huh. Weird. That's really strange. I want an app settings dot JSON. No. What? Fine. We'll just call it a text file. App settings dot JSON. Yes. Okay. Okay, folks, here we go. Why don't I get edit capabilities? Hello. I have no JSON file editor. I thought this was supposed to be awesome. Oh my word.
Okay. Yikes, folks. Yikes. All right, I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, so this is our screen settings. And screen settings is going to be all of our, uh, our model here. So I have full width, if I can pull this out here, actually, probably just grab it all how am i doing it in the screen right now data extractor it's the height of the screenshot. So all of this, it's just the score. It's just these things that we need to save in here. Okay. Let me get all this stuff done. My hope is that I can do this. X and Y and then that. That's what I hope. We'll see if that actually works. X. And Y. I really hate the fact that I don't have a JSON editor. Interesting. I might have to sit down one day and figure out why this instance of Visual Studio is deficient. Okay, I am going to Done. That looks about right. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to save that. My program, I am going to...
Yeah, make a new eye configuration. Just new configuration. Um. Shoot. Back? No, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. Come on. I usually make web services, not standalone console applications. .NET icon configuration. Come on. Three point one. Let's do this. Thank you. That's the one I want. How about showing me how to use it? Okay, folks, one second. I'm going to look something up that I'm not allowed to share online because I'm frustrated. got two factor authentications. <laughs> uh. Okay, well, this is certainly a bizarro world. Oh, goodness me.
Okay, folks. Now I'm back looking at things that I wasn't allowed to show on the internet. It's a configuration builder. That's what I want. I'm going to add a JSON file, which it's not going to know how to do until I do this. Did I do it right? JSON, there we go. There we go. Let's install that. Okay. I accept. Good. Now I can add a JSON file. Or add JSON, maybe? Just add JSON. Uh, yeah. Okay. App settings. JSON. Okay. Uh huh. Come on. Okay. And then Uh, now I need to again look at something that I'm not allowed to show on the internet. So here we go. Okay, I'm back. Build this container. Okay, so now I'm I'm setting up the um the dependency injection. And I want to use autofac, so let's use autofac. Autofac will let me create register types based on uh, dependency injection, and then I can do inversion of control to get at whatever it is I need. This will help me in the future when I'm creating things. So, ooh, that's interesting. This is the one where I get like registrations and I need everything, right? Okay. Um, How do you start off with console application?
Okay, that makes sense. Uh, so I go ahead and I build it and it's, uh, it's a container. So, okay, let's build our container. And in here, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to just um, builder dot register module and we'll go Tetris data extractor module. Okay, that's fine. And then I will return builder.build. Good. Let's build my configuration in a separate. No. In a separate method as well. There we go, all right, configuration. Good. We're getting there. Okay, so I've got my configuration, I've got my container. Uh, I need a, what? Oh, okay. I need a Tetris data extract registration module. Um, Okay, let's forget about that until I actually build it. Now let's go to my Tetris Data Extractor project and we'll create a registration module here. And the way these things work is that each, um, each project will have its own registration module, which I'll be able to register. Is that right? Oh, I can just check in here. Yeah, it's an I module. You know what? I'm going to do something I'm not allowed to share on the internet. <laughs> uh, and if you're wondering what it is I'm actually doing, I'm looking up examples in code bases from my work to remind myself how these things are done. Uh, but I can't very well show you code from work. It is just module. Okay, I'm back. Uh, it is just a module. If I do this, um, I need to install Autofac here as well. And if you don't know what dependency injection is or inversion of control, or um, it's just a way of making it easy really to Traditionally, you would send into constructors all the dependencies an object requires. So it's the calling function. If I decide I need a screen reader, for instance, I need to 
come up with and gather all of a screen reader's dependencies and then pass it along to the constructor of a screen reader. Inversion of control and dependency injection allows you to flip this on its head, where if I need a screen reader, that's all I need to know. And if the screen reader needs to actually change its dependencies, you do that in the screen reader constructor without affecting anything else. It's quite, it's quite a marvelous invention. And it makes testing really, really easy. Okay, so now I can, using autofact, there we go. And I believe this is a protected method. Uh, load. And then what we're going to do is now we're going to register all of our types. So what's our types here? I have a data extractor. And a data extractor, uh, screen reader, in image reducer, do I have... Is this used anywhere? My image scaler. Is this used anywhere? See, I, I suspect my image scaler is not used anywhere. Find all references to the image scaler. Um, oh, it's actually in Digit Reader. Okay. Let's put that here. But let's unpin it. Okay. So that's important. And Color Checker. The Digit Reader is important as well. So we're looking for types. Types of services. They're called services, but they're just classes that do things. So models are classes that just hold data. We're not going to register these in the traditional sense. But actually, I wonder if we should. No. Uh, okay, so I need, let's just start from the top. I need a data extractor. So let's register the data extractor. And I do that by just registering data extractor as implemented interfaces. So if I need a data extractor, I can just ask for an I data extractor. And then we're going to do instance per lifetime scope. <sighs> Every time you ask for an iData extractor, it could create a new one, or it could create one and keep it around for the whole chain of method calls. Or you can tell it to just create one data extractor and use it everywhere. Um, the data extractor doesn't really require a whole lot of data to be stored. So we don't care that we're using different instances of data extractor. It's important to keep your scopes as, as small as possible um, so you don't get into memory leaks. So I usually use instance per lifetime scope. So that's the data extractor. We're going to move down to the digit reader now and we will register the digit reader. Oops. And again, as implemented interfaces and instance per lifetime scope. So what this is doing is it's creating a dictionary of types and ways to build types. Okay, so now I need to register all of these classes. The, the color checker, which for some reason I've spelled the American way. I need to do the image reducer.
and you can get fancy with these things. You can say whenever I ask for an image scaler, instead of just reduce, uh, returning the type, you know, run this method first. Uh, implemented interfaces. Okay, I think I've got the color checker image. That's all of those. The models we're not going to worry about. And I have a screen reader. Okay, that's all. That's all you need. And then it doesn't matter that the eye screen reader if you actually go to the screen reader itself, you know, it requires a digit reader. You don't need to know that when you're asking for a, a screen reader. You just need to use the iScreen reader interface. So when we're back into our main program here, we'll register that module. to add a reference to my Tetris data extractor. There we go. And I return an I container. So now now, if I wanted a digit reader, or uh, uh, just a data extractor. So a data extractor needs a screen reader and needs an image reducer. If I actually go to the screen reader, it needs a digit reader as well. Why does that not work? Um, the image reducer needs a color checker. And I'd have to know all of this, this whole list of dependency, dependency chain if I wanted to create a data extractor. So I'd have to go, you know, data extractor equals new uh, data extractor. Um, so that needs a screen reader. So then I have to go new screen reader. Oh, the new screen reader needs a digit reader. So then I have to go new digit reader. And the digit reader needs an image reducer. So then I'd have to do, you know, the whole thing is, an, is nonsense. But I can say using I could take the container and I can say begin lifetime scope. And now I can say data extractor equals scope dot um, resolve. And I want to resolve an I data extractor using the interface that's it we could put a breakpoint here this very important line we can run it oh this is not set up as my startup there we go Tetris tools. Okay. That's set up as my startup project. Now I can run it. Hits the what? Oh. Whoops. I know why. Because my app settings was not uh, being copied. Copy if newer. 
to the output directory. Okay, now this should work. Oh, come on. What's wrong? After property name, expected a colon. Line number three. This is not what I had in mind here, folks. There, if I had a JSON editor, I it would have caught that. I need to get a JSON editor. Okay, now. There we go. See, now I have a Tetris data extractor and it has all these things, but I didn't need to know what it needed. Look at all these dependencies. Here's the reducer. So this color checker, if I make an object ID out of it, you could probably barely see that. But the color checker for the digit reader is the same color checker for the reducer denoted by this dollar sign one. They're the exact same instance. And that's because we registered things uh, with the lifetime scope instead of an instance per dependency. So it's using the same one in that whole dependency chain, which is, is what I want. Uh, okay, so we got our autofac registration done. So the other thing I need to do is Try and set up uh, the app settings. So what I'm going to do, you can actually register models. And this is what we'll show next. Um, so I have my main app settings here. What? Wow, that looks nice. <laughs> I, I didn't expect that. Is this actually for real now? No, okay. Okay, anyway, it just, I, I don't have a JSON editor and it, it, it syntax highlighted everything for me. So that's nice. Okay, so now I want to read my, my data from the app settings and register that. So if you'll notice the, uh, the data extractor creates, where does it create it? Oh, we have a, Oh, we got some serious issues there, or maybe not. Okay. Um, it creates the screen information module. And I think what we're going to do is take the screen information model Uh, just one second. All right, so the screen information model is made of two parts. It's made of this, which is calculated from the screenshot itself. And I wonder how many of these things is actually required but whatever and then all of these are it's uh element positions it's basically screen positions so i think what i'm going to do is we're going to go to screen model go to definition why doesn't it work when i hit f12 when clearly go to def
I don't know what's happening. Anyway. Oh, because it's in another window. Uh, there we go. Okay. So, we got, we got these things. These are like here. Okay. And then I need this stuff. And this is kind of something else entirely. So these are... Um, positions and then I'm going to make a new public screen positions here uh, and that's where all of these are going to be Oops, this is a class. Okay. So that sort of splits out the positional elements from the rest of the information needed. And now what my goal is, is data extractor now doesn't have any of this stuff, but what I'm going to do is we are going to say screen positions. We're going to pass in an instance of screen positions and set it here. You're like, OK. Um, and you might say, okay, well, that's all great and everything. Um, but how do we get it into the information model? Well, let's see where we call this. We call it in get all data. So let's pass it in to here. Screen positions, positions. You're like, okay, well, that takes care of that portion of it, but how do we get it into get all data? And this is where the kicker is. We're going to make a new a new instance of screen positions here. Actually, yeah, let's do that do that uh, hold on hold on what am I doing yeah positions is now a, a, a class level variable so I can just pass it into there there we go positions Here, we don't need this anymore. That's what we actually need. And that might actually change. I, that's okay though. Uh, get information model. What's the problem here? Oh, right, because I don't, I don't need to pass it in anymore. Uh, so you're like, okay, well, how does it get set? And this is where inversion of control comes in, because I could just say, well, I just want a screen position. Give it to me here, right now. And it's like, okay, well, I'll give it to you. Do I have to care that whenever I asked for a data extractor, I now have to supply screen positions? No, I don't have to worry about that. 
as long as at some point we register the screen positions. And this is get value at. Now look at this. Instead of info model, I can just say screen. I can just say positions now. Okay, well, this will be a bit of a copy paste, but at least it's not that hard. And what's going to happen is these positions are going to be set at the very beginning of, you know, when you're, the program boots up. It's going to be set from the app settings. Um, now I need to register, register. So I'm going to actually send in the configuration there. So I'll register the module and then I'm going to register type and now from this type I'm going to say screen positions now how am I going to register the screen positions Well, first, uh, let's do something like this. We can get the section from the app settings called Let's call this screen positions. Okay. So that is what the section in the settings file is called. We can just do this. Okay. Um, is this, can I get, uh, see here. Let me see if I can figure out uh, C sharp. I can configuration get section as type. That's not telling me anything. Sometimes these documents are so horrible. Oh, interesting. I don't know if that's possible.
because he's using here a an extension method on a service collection, which is Microsoft's vanilla dependency injection is not autofact. Maybe I'll do a quick search for C sharp autofac app settings. Oh, there's a get. There's a dot get method on these things. Um, I wonder where that's. Where is that I configuration section? See, the problem is I need to. Is it in the bind? Shoot. Okay, once again, I'm going to look up something that I'm not supposed to show on the internet. I don't know why I clapped. I'm not going anywhere. Okay, I'm back. My attempt was fruitless. I need dot net. I configuration get section as type. <sighs> Where is that? defined people how do you get that so i'm after the i configuration section okay i need to find this unfortunately okay um i configuration section get value
Oh, man, this guy's making his own. Okay, once again, I'm going to do something bad. Well, it's not bad. Okay, Microsoft Extensions Configuration Binder. I was right. Uh. It's the binder here. Yeah, that's fine. I don't care. Get. Ha. Huh. Awesome. Okay. Then I'm going to builder.register type um, screen positions. And then I will always Okay, I'm going to, whatever you pass in, I'm just going to give you back screen positions. Now, is that the best way of doing it? Autofac, registering components. Um... Here we go. That's what we need. We need to build a register instance output as. Okay. Register instance. And then, right? Yeah. And then I'm going to go screen positions. Maybe that's all I need to do.
this can be a single instance because it's everywhere. So it'll always use the same one. Uh, okay, so now, now, uh, based on these values, we should get those values in here in our data extractor, finally. So let's actually go ahead and put a breakpoint in the const... No, let's not do that. Let's go back to program here. So, and we'll create a scope. Uh, begin lifetime scope. Here we go. Bar data extractor equals contain, uh, scope dot resolve. Um, we're resolving the data extractor. Okay. I'm going to put a temporary line there. So now we're going to, now we're going to debug it. And now the data extractor, sh oh. Oh, shoot, right. The other thing I don't know is that I can, I could parse a point. Um, because that's the structure of a point. Is that going to parse correctly into a point object? I don't know. So the data extractor, it seems to have worked. Uh, positions, look at all that, all those things. So let's change, and we have to be very careful. Let's change the, the Z point to be 902 on the Y axis. So we'll change that here. 902, save, run again. So here we are in our data extractor, our positions, our Z point is 902, if you can see that, so it works. I'm gonna change that back to 302. Okay, so that's actually working. Uh, so we're good. We're good here. We can actually We've done that um, Okay, I think These tests are kind of stupid. I'm going to remove them, but I think that's good for now. What I want to do Well, let's actually run it. So, okay. Whenever you run a program, oh boy, we're we're getting late here. Whenever you run a program, you get arguments, string arguments in your main method. And so we're going to send in the name of a, of a screenshot into this thing. And this thing is going to read and send out the data. And just as I say that, I realize there's a whole bunch of cleanup that needs to be happening in Data Extractor. So we might have to wait until next time to do that. Let's actually put all this stuff back. Um,
we need the model every time we get all data. So I'm going to have to do this. Do it for the lines as well. Oh, wait a second. That's we're bringing in a bitmap. Here we're bringing in a bitmap. There we go. Lines needs a bitmap and an info model. Let's uh, rename this to screenshot. Okay, I think that's okay for now. None of these things. So I have all of these things in the new way up here. Yep. So we'll clean this up. Okay, that actually wasn't too bad. I'll build this just to make sure it builds. Build succeeded. So I can now go using var scope equals container to begin lifetime scope. Get my data extractor. Okay, that's fine. Now I have the data extractor. And now I'm going to var data equals data extractor dot get all data from a new bitmap. args zero. Okay, and then um, console dot write line. Just do a dot to string. In the data model, we can write this. can return score there we go and then from here we'll do this Level lines T J Z O S L I. Boom. This is level. This is lines. This is T. This is J. This is Z. This is O. And 
I we're going to have to do that all over again. Lines. Although this. Oh, no, that's level. Level. Lines. T. J. Some things about writing software are monotonous. <laughs> Lazy. Oh, come on. L. Number. Oh. Okay. And I number. That's how I print out one of those Tetris data models. Okay. Um, let's actually find <laughs> Okay, so here's one that I found. Oops. We're going to go screenshot.png. We're going to copy the full path details. Oh, it's just Z. It's just in the Z drive. That's that's pretty awesome. Uh, okay, let us add. Well, let's publish this. Actually, no, hold on. Let's do the release. Rebuild the solution. Oh, uh, the, the uh, yeah. You know what? We're not dealing with the tests anymore. They're totally irrelevant. Okay, let's let's rebuild it. Okay, so now I should have I do have dot net. Let's uh that can't be expanded either. Well that stinks. I don't have a very good terminal right now. Let's edit. Let's go to properties. Font. Okay, that's a bit better. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Tetris data extractor. Uh, Tetris tools. Yeah, that's right. CD bin. I should have a release. There's a bunch of junk in it, but I do have the Tetris tools. Oh, it's got an exe right there. Tetris tools. Close the program. So can I go Tetris tools? Z colon backslash screenshot dot PNG. Uh, 
Okay, let's have a look at the screenshot, folks. This is a horrible. Let me see if I can find a better font. So horrible. That's what I want. There we go. So according to the screenshot, my score is 760. My level is 18. Lines, my line count is 1. I have two T's, one J, two Z's, one O, three S pieces, four L's, and one long bar. So that works. Okay, what else do I have? Here's another one I have. Let's figure this one out. I'm going to edit this. Not edit the picture, edit the name. Screenshot 2. Okay, so now I go screenshot 2. Okay, here we go. Uh, the score is correct, the level is correct. Seven lines, and then eight, seven, eight, eight. Eight, seven, and four. Folks, I think we've got something here. So, the other thing I'd like to just realize is how much time this takes to run. How long was that? I'm not sure. But it was pretty good. If we continuously had screenshots one after the other after the other, we could probably keep up, especially if we don't look at the the piece counts because they're not as they're not as interesting. So that's pretty exciting. Anyway, okay, so we're going to leave it off here. I'm gonna I'm going to uh, save my changes here and throw it into into uh, Bitbucket, and so next time. We'll see if we can't start analyzing a real Tetris feed, because that'll be exciting. But in order to do that, we got to get this working on Linux, which theoretically, because everything's .NET Core, it should just work. So we'll, we'll see how that, if that's actually real life. Okay, thanks for joining me uh, in this <laughs> very long part, uh, but it was good because we... We had a lot of cleanup to do and we got a lot of things figured out and so we're ready to move forward. Awesome. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.